won't be until mid-decade, I don't think, uh, until the economy can fully adjust and we get those jobs uh, back. Do the math, and it's not hard to get to 20% unemployment. The administration has bet so much on PPP helping lead to what they're saying will be likely a V-shaped recovery, and that doesn't seem very certain at all. Uh, it was obvious that many on the left were just giddy a couple months ago that the virus had devastated the booming Trump economy. They were thrilled. And they were wish-casting gruesome jobs numbers from April, April, basically, all the way to Election Day. And they predicted that the economy would shed another 8 million jobs in May. Well, it was their hate and their anger toward this administration that continued to consume whatever good judgment or sense they have. And today, the credibility of all those who forecasted doom and gloom, well, it took a major body blow when the stunning May jobs numbers came in. New jobs numbers show that the U.S. added 2.5 million jobs in May. Added. That's a big surprise. This number is higher than I would have predicted. Shocking for all the right reasons to see this number. It is definitely underscoring the fact that this will have been the shortest recession in history. Remember, there was going to be no V-shaped recovery. Well, the number of jobs created in the last month by American entrepreneurs and businesses shattered every record. The Dow jumped 800 points today. And the media was so ready to pounce on what they presume were going to be these horrid jobs numbers that they were caught totally off guard. Now, this morning, the Amazon Washington Post tweeted this gem. Grim milestone to be reached as May unemployment rate nears 20%. Well, they deleted that embarrassment, and their second attempt read, U.S. jobless rate unexpectedly declined to 13.3% in May amid pandemic. These are the most dishonest people ever. Just own up to it, okay? You detest Trump so much that you allowed your own bias to get in the way of what should be reporting and real data analysis. Stock market was over 27,000 today, kids. On election day in uh, 2016, it was at 18,000. So an honest tweet would have been maybe, I don't know, in stunning jobs, report, investors prefer Trump in a pandemic over the Democrats on the verge of victory. Oh, I should have said that one. Now, just over a week ago, remember this, the Politico uh, reported that Democrats are, quote, dreading a full-blown recovery ahead of November. According to the article, the possibility of Americans getting back to work has caused some Democrats, especially Obama alum, alumni around Washington, to panic. Oh, they're panicking today. Come on, Joe Biden would surely have preferred that we stayed in lockdown through the election. Maybe all in Michigan will, for all I know. And he offered this feeble response to the stunning economic news. The president who takes no responsibility for costing millions and millions of Americans their jobs deserves no credit when a fraction of them return. Of course, if Joe wins the presidency, we won't be seeing these types of numbers because he'll immediately make it easier to ship more jobs over to China, like we used to do. And he'll green light more foreign labor to take the jobs that Americans would do. But what about the polls? I know all of you are freaking out the polls. Well, the experts say that Biden's way ahead. It's his election to lose. Folks like James Carville are predicting a Democrat wipeout. Experts say Americans want more progressive government. Well, they said that in 2016, too, remember? All the same people made all the same predictions. But then, as now, most of the so-called experts are just horribly wrong. In fact, they're not really experts in anything I've concluded. The media figures who furrow their brows and huff and puff about the president at every turn, they obsess over every tweet, all the left-wing economists, the social scientists who are desperate to usher in their era of a new normal. They've been predicting Trump's imminent political demise since day one. Their predictions about Russia and Mueller, wrong. Their predictions about impeachment, wrong. Their prediction about Trump's China tariffs, oh yeah, wrong. Their predictions about the USMCA, Wrong. Their predictions about the coronavirus. 
wrong. Remember their predictions about the spring break COVID super spreaders? Wrong. And as I've said time and again, you with your common sense are so much smarter than most of these people will ever be. Again, they're not really experts. They're just people who go on TV to play the role of experts. Yet, let's be very clear. They're not just getting it wrong time and again. If, if that was all it was, you know, they wouldn't have a job anymore. They're important because they're perpetrating a fraud on you in America. And in some cases, it's even costing lives. Like that bogus hydroxychloroquine study that was published in the prestigious medical journal, The Lancet. I mean, that's just collapsed. They had to retract the whole study. We're going to expose that later in the hour with two of the origin, original uh, medicine cabinet members. You don't want to miss that. But countries and hospitals, including in this country hospitals, they stopped allowing the use of that drug based on false data. How scary is that? And the experts, by the way, locked you down for weeks and weeks in your home, some of you still locked down, based on false COVID mortality projections. You couldn't go to your daughter's wedding, your son's baseball game, your favorite restaurant, your kids couldn't go to school. You miss graduations and proms and all these life experiences. But the moment there was an event or a protest that they thought was important, all their rules were out the window. Look at Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer or Pritzker in Illinois. The left is always the same. It's always the same. You will sacrifice, but they, they won't. Just like with Obamacare, climate change, and everything else, the experts and academia, come on, they've been urging us to do things like what? Defund the police? They've been urging that for years. And they say it's going to lead to safer communities, more trust. We know that's a fraud. It's going to lead to more suffering and more destruction, but not for the rich liberals who vote for Biden or the hashtagging Hollywood celebrities or the Fortune 500 CEOs. They're not going to be affected, really, by a disbanded police force. They have their own private security guards and their expensive security systems. They can flee in their private jets to any country they want, any time of day or night. Everyone else? they'll be just left with a lot of bad expert advice. And that's the angle.